Do you remember Mario, Donkey Kong, or Mario Kart? You grew up in the 60s like I have. Well, not in the 60s, but in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, or the aughts, like me. Chances are, you've heard of them. But, you know, none of these characters are possible without the brains behind them. They are the legends of gaming the world over. And they are part of a trio of gaming juggernauts in the world of gaming. This is our third video, and before you rail me in the comments, I accidentally deleted this video. So if this video sounds familiar, then you're right. I accidentally deleted this video, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and redo it. So this is our second video. We can't get out, and we. And if our head wasn't attached to our body, we'd be running around like a chicken with its head cut off. So that out of the way, this is everything you need to know to get leveled up on one of the most iconic gaming franchises of all time. Freaking Nintendo. Let's, let's get going. But before we do, before we do, today's video would not be possible this evening without our sponsor, Jaws Fundraising. Um, an old friend of mine by the name of Quay Scott, he, he made this team over in Malden, and they are absolutely wonderful. They're the best people. They take care of their customers to the best they can. Um, the business venture that in question here was started in 2014. Um, the script says 2015, but it's in 2014. Um, in 2015, the following year, 2014 slash 2015, they used the funds from a coffee fundraising campaign. Um, I remember that vaguely. They had one brand that said it was an earthen flavor, a robust flavor. We didn't want to tell people that the coffee flavor tasted like dirt, but that's the, that's the joke of the day. Anyway, they used the fundraising money to go to Carowinds for RBF Fan Club in June of 2015. Today, they continue to offer aggressive fundraising campaign solutions for you, your school, your small business, or team. Um, and they're absolutely dependable. Don't, and just don't take my word for it. Check out the awesome five-star Google Plus ratings on uh, both Google Plus and Facebook. Give Coach a call Tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, not, not tonight. He, he's um, probably asleep. Not tonight or tomorrow morning, but sometime in the afternoon, whenever you need help with a, um, with a, let's say you need money for a trip and you want to go to this cruise, right? You don't know who to turn to. Call Coach t tomorrow afternoon at 864-420-7133 for my most loyal viewers in the Palmetto State. And please, guys, y'all support the companies that support us. We couldn't be anywhere without them. All right. So let's talk about Nintendo. Who, by the way, is a thriving international gaming conglomerate responsible for some of the coolest games and consoles anywhere in the world. You've got the Switch, you've got the Wii, the Wii U. Many, many of these stories are awesome, but much of what we know about Nintendo comes over 130 years earlier, believe it or not. So Nintendo was known as Nintendo Karuta, founded in Shinagoyuku, in one of the 11 wards in the city of Kyoto, Japan, on September 23rd, 1889. Now, this is about a video game, not a history lesson. Without going too far into dem demographics, a ward in Japan is large enough to is it's basically a subdivision large en enough to have been designated by city ordinance. Meaning this ward, Shimogoyuku, in Kyoto is large enough to be its own city within a city. Um, so the fledgling company was created to manufacture and distribute Hanafuda or Heaven cards. Um, these gained popularity over the years. Whoop. Um, I accidentally pulled a, um, 
James there, so we're gonna. Um, hang on, hang on. So, um, they gained popularity over the years. Now, despite the initial successes, the company ran into some financial struggles. One of them was due to operating in a niche market, or a market where Hanafuda, the specific item produced at the time, was a market that sold in that area. And, um, and it caught, and there were many other factors that caught Nintendo off balance. However, they were able to overcome, though, um, coming up with solutions to many problems. One of them being the production of a cheaper and lower quality line of playing cards, Tengu while also conducting product offerings in other cities such as Osaka, where game profits were high. Now, for those who don't know, Hanafuda is a term in the Japanese language meaning flower cards. But, here's something you don't know. The term Nintendo and its translation is in question. While with many people thinking that it means leave luck to heaven, while others think it means the temple of free Hanafuda. But if, if the term Nintendo is in question, you can't question the fact that there were other things that were off balance with Nintendo, like this first deck of playing cards sold in 1902 according to company records. But... Other records show that the first deck was sold, get this, five years later, in 1907. That's shortly after the um, Russo-Japanese War. Um, the um, founder, um, hold on, I'm going to look up the founder of Nintendo. I'm going to look up his name. The founder of the Nintendo company built that market now here's the guy's name um, foot his name is Fusajiro Yamauchi he was born on on November 22nd, um, 1859. Um, and he was the guy that um, had to retire. And he hand over, handed over the business to his son-in-law, Sekiro Kaneda, who would later adopt the um, Yamauchi name. In 1933, Sekiro Kaneda established the company as a title partnership, titled Yamauchi Nintendo Company and company LTD, investing in the construction of a new corporate headquarters in a new building next door to the original one in a train station in Kyoto, Japan. Meanwhile, guess what? A little thing, I don't know if you've heard of it, maybe you have, known as the Second World War happened. It started technically in 1939. But many historians point to Japan for starting it over in Asia, which this war had a negative impact on Japan, leading to the foreign ban on foreign cards being sold here in um, um, in Japan. The Japanese government said, "Hey, look, you can't sell that card here. It's non-patriotic, and and that's just the way the cookie crumbles." However, all was not lost. Business took off for the fledgling company immediately after the war with the founding of Marafuku Company LTD in 1947, one of the forerunners to the Nintendo we now know and love. But in 1950, um, due to Sekiro san's deteriorating health, Hideyoshi Yamauchi became the new president of Nintendo. In 1959, they they contracted Walt Disney, the guy who founded literally the Disney Empire we know today, to incorporate many animated characters owned by the company into the Nintendo playing cards 
that they sold. And after many name changes, it became clear that the demand, the adult-oriented Hanafudo cards and the Disney-inspired blank cards were showing signs of, ex of exhaustion and sales. They needed something new. So, in 1969, hey, 69, they attempted to launch their first sale in electronics, but it was a flop. Despite the gas crisis of 1973 leading to a shortage in prices, but it had one positive effect. It led to the rise of the Nintendo we now know and love as a gaming conglomerate. In 1974, Yamauchi acquired Magnavox and began development on the first video game console, which was a color TV game, launched on June 1st, 1977. But, and here's the most disappointing part, are you ready? It was sold only to Japan. But, this only Japanese game was followed up with the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES launched as a Famicom or computer or family computer. Now the Japanese market got it on June 15th, 1983 while I'm looking for a bottle of water or family computer selling at 1400 yen. Meanwhile, while the, meanwhile the American market got the Nintendo Entertainment System as a bare bones NES on October 18th, 1985. Now, despite a global crash in the game market, this console revived it. It would go on to long to remain the go on to become the longest surviving console in history, surviving until 1995 in the United States, selling 62 million units around the world. Meanwhile, in Japan. It remained in the Japanese market even longer, surviving until 2003. Now, although there were some similarities between the Famicom and the NES, there were some differences between the two. While the Famicom had a predominantly white plastic, dark red trimmings, a top-loading cartridge, cartridge slot, grooves on both sides of the deck where you could put the controllers, went when they weren't being used, and a 15-pin expansion port for accessories. The NES featured a front-loading cartridge covered by a small hinged door that could be opened to remove or insert cartridges at will, and then closed up at other times when they felt that the game that was in there was what they wanted to play. But in Europe, through a strange partnership with Mattel, the same people behind the Barbie dolls and Hot Wheels cars. They released it alongside Nintendo. Now, I need you to trust me, though. This actually happened. Go to Google and Google Mattel Nintendo. But I need you to trust me, though. This actually happened. Meanwhile, in the UK, in UK, Italy, and Australia, which all share the PAL-A region, the Mattel version of the NES released, along with the UK release receiving the NES version, the regular NES version of the entertainment system, with Italy receiving what's known as the Versione Italiana NES. When the um, NES was first released in those countries, it was distributed by Mattel and Nintendo who decided to use a lockout chip specific to those countries, different from the chip used in other European countries that they used for the um, NES. Strange bedfellows aside, however, the Nintendo Entertainment System included the most amazing titles that stick with us today. You have Legend of Zelda, Metroid, featuring Samus Aran. She, she has a suit, right, that she wears, and she has this little... Um, pulsar cannon on her arm. She looks absolutely beautiful. But you know, Nintendo's responsible for perhaps the most iconic siblings of all time. 
Mario Brothers, Mario and Luigi. Those two, those dynamic two, made its very first debut in the 1985 game Super Mario Brothers, featuring Mario, who was a star in the Nintendo arcade game known as Donkey Kong, where, where he dodged barrels being thrown at him by Donkey Kong to save the princess, Princess Peach, and his brother Luigi, who would appear a little bit later. Meanwhile, Legend, Legend of Zelda, featuring Link, the elved warrior, fighting against the evil Ganondorf to, pro to protect the Triforce from the evil Ganondorf. Meanwhile, Metroid launched August 6th of that same year. The Nintendo Entertainment System would change forever. And so, and so Nintendo would upgrade the NES to, to the SNES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, in 1990. On November 21st, 1990, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System was released to the Japanese market, while North America, Europe, Ireland, Australia, and Brazil all followed suit in August of 1991 for North America, April of 1992, June and July of 1992 for Ireland and Australia, and August of 1993 for Brazil, respectively. The 16-bit design of the SNES incorporated sound and processors, incorporated graphics and sound processors that performed tiling and simulated 3D effects, a palette of over 32,000 colors, 32,768 colors to be, to be exact, and an 8-channel adaptive differential post-code modulation audio. Now this was a huge leap forward from the 8-bit um, NES, and it was one of the most successful consoles of all time, selling over 14, no, blah, 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 49 million units. Get your teeth together. In the 13 years that it ran, this was later followed by the fifth generation console, the, N the Nintendo 64. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it. I remember when I was in here in Greenville, and I remember a friend of mine having one of those. Launched in June of 23rd, a bit of a June the 23rd in, of 1996 in Japan with the North American market following suit on September 29th of that year. It had a car, it had a design based on the NES and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System before it, but a radically different design. A port for game cartridges was placed on top with four ports for their iconic Nintendo 64 controllers. Its hardware was a leap forward as well with its 60 four bits of um, computing power and memory at four megabytes of random access memory along with anywhere from four to 64 megabytes of RAM with its iconic game pack. The Nintendo 64 was the third best-selling console with just under 32 million units sold in the six years it was in market. But what Nintendo was also best known for by far, along with Mario and Luigi, was the development of a new video game and the launch of their iconic trading card game, Pokemon. It was known as Pocket Monsters over in Japan. It's known as Pokemon here in the States. Launched in 1996, it went on to become the best-selling franchise within Nintendo alongside Mario and Luigi, sporing the debut of their animated series featuring a boy by the name of Ash Ketchum and his Pokemon companion, Pikachu. But you know, just like every, it, like, just like everything, there was a problem. And they always ran into them. You had wild Pokemon, tough, tough gym opponents, and the icing on the cake was the infamous diabolical duo of Jesse and James. Oh, and Meowth. Team Rocket. And maybe Wobbuffet. So with sales skyrocketing, skyrocketing of Nintendo's Pokemon and of course Mario and Luigi, they decided to launch the sixth generation of their console series, known as the Nintendo GameCube. Launched in 2001 in both North America and Japan, it featured a concept never tried before, um, optic discs, um, which was basically a shrunken down CD game. Now, now, now I'm gonna let you know, this part is important. 
It was never designed to run CDs or DVDs. However, it was a, it was a huge leap forward for the company. From cartridges in the 90s by CDs by the end of the aughts, Nintendo was doing something right. And, and it was just in time, too. Xbox was released from the um, North American company Microsoft. We're going to be doing a video um, on down the road about those guys. Uh, PlayStation launched the um, PlayStation, and then you had um, Sega Saturn and those people as well. Now, cartridges would go on to be the basis for their handheld market, which was in full swing with the Game Boy, the second version of their handhelds. Launched in April of 1989, followed by North America three months later. It had a three-year lifespan, but it ran on four AA batteries originally. Its predecessor was a Game & Watch, launched in April of 1980, which was primitive in design, but it was a huge leap forward for the company because they wanted to get into handhelds. Um, however, the Game Boy would pave the way for future handheld portables alongside the Game Boy. The Game Boy Color followed nine years later, launching on October 21st, 1998. And in Japan and the following month elsewhere. So that's November of 1998, North America, Australia, Europe. It was like the Game Boy, sharing some of its design features with the original, but games for the first time instead of just black and white were now rendered in color for the first time ever in, in the handheld history for Nintendo. This basically paved the way for the next generation of handhelds being developed alongside the consoles. This was followed by the Game Boy Advance, which was released in March of 21st of, two, of 2001 in Japan, then on June 11th in North America, followed by the European launch game 11 days later. But it now it did get an upgrade sometime later, sometime later as the Game Boy Advance SP. It was a flip phone version of the Game Boy Advance. Yet the dimensions of this handheld game were a leap forward, the Game Boy Advance only needing two AA batteries instead of four. However, it would be the next generation of handhelds that would completely change the future for Nintendo. And the next console, after the GameCube, that would also change how consoles would redesign UI. It all started with the Nintendo DS. It was a big leap forward in UI with a dual screen technology. You had one regular LCD screen measuring 62 by 46 millimeters and one touch screen with the same dimensions as the previously mentioned LCD monitor that was able to um, accept input with the stylus. Of course, you had the same four letter um, four letter buttons, you had X, Y, A, and B, along with the D-pad, start, select, and the power button. Through the internet, gamers could connect to the internet and play online through the DSi that was launched in 2012. The, um, I think either 2010 or 2011, not, no, I think it was launched in 2009. But the DS was released to the public on November 21st, 2004, in North America, and nearly a month later on December 4th in Japan, followed by its release in Australia on February 24th, and its release on in Europe on March 11th of 2004, the following, no, March 11th of 2006, no, March 11th of 2005, excuse me. And this was launched alongside with its console cousin, the, the Nintendo Wii. Now, the Wii was a new take on the old console, where this time, instead of you had the controller in the hands, you were the controller. Not necessarily, though. Featuring a sensor, it came with a Wii balance board. You had a um, handheld Wii remote that you could c connect a nunchuck with. So, you, so this, the remote was a, con was a controller. By extension, you were. You had um, Wii... Um, Wii Sports, one of them baseball, so in order to throw a pitch, you had to put the remote back and do like that in order to for the sensor to detect that you were throwing a ball. And if you wanted to swing, you had to hold it like this and then like that and then come across like that in order, in order for the sensor to detect that you were swinging your bat. 
So it so it had the sensor. And it came with a Wii balance board. It was an accessory for a game that developed, that was developed by Nintendo named Wii Fit. It was one of two accessories that came available for games for the um, Wii. Mario Kart Wii being the second, having its steering wheel as an accessory. Alongside the Wii, you had the 3DS that came out on February 26th, 2011, followed by its, followed with its European debut on March 25th of 2011, its debut on in the North American market on the 27th of March of 2011, and the debut on Australia on March 31st. Then the upgraded 3DS XL released in Japan and Europe on July 28th, 2012, followed by the North American debut in August of 19 of August 19th, and the Australian debut on August 23rd. However, the Wii U was the first attempt at a hybrid console and it was a flop. It was a console and a handheld game gaming system all rolled into one, but it flopped. But the DS would go on to be one of the best selling handheld consoles of all time. The DS line of handheld sold 154.02 million units globally. Coming from mostly the DS line, which sold 93.86 million units globally, globally as well. Now, launched on November 8th of 2012 with the Japanese market, a launch, Japanese market launch a month later on December 8th, the Wii U, like we said, was a flop. But it set the stage for the current generation of hybrid consoles for the company. And it, the Nintendo Switch developed alongside their latest generation of handhelds, the 2DS. Now, the 2DS XL was launched on, on June 15th of 2017 in Australia, followed by its release in Japan a month later on July 13th, and its release in North America on July the 28th. It was, it was the successor to the standard 2DS, which was released on October 12, 2013. But the handheld mi re received mixed reception, received mixed reception, excuse me, while Nintendo was praised for how I was priced, along with its position in the market as a lower alternative to other handhelds. Meanwhile, the Nintendo Switch would be the first true hybrid console, launching on March 3rd of 2017, and it's March 3rd, 2017, it is Nintendo's 8th generation of console and the current console for Nintendo so far. So, what's next for the company? Well, we know there's not going to be a new console on the horizon, but the Switch is looking to remain early in 2021, according to Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg, now, the new model will have more computing power, 4K high definition graphics, and the new model will most likely feature an upgraded but custom version of a chipset known as the NVIDIA Tegra, made by the software company NVIDIA. That's based on new ARM processor technologies. So far, Nintendo's remained the flagship console conglomerate and the hallmark on which all other console gaming companies are measured. And they look to stay that way throughout the 21st century. So, with that, that's everything you need to know to get leveled up on the Nintendo franchise. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? What did we miss? Please let us know in the comments below. If you have not done so already, please subscribe. Make sure you're hitting that bell button so you do not miss a beat of what we publish. Thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you next time.